Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday, start of the work week. Monday afternoon here, 1243 p.m. California time, October 28th, 2024. Getting close to Halloween here on Thursday. Goodness, already coming upon us. Uh, latest activity shows a little 0.7 earthquake there across northern California. Also, if you look way up north here, across the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, some uh, movement earlier this morning with a 4.1 earthquake here. Uh, nothing showing up here on the USGS map, but uh, it's showing up there on the Earthquake uh, 3D globe, which is uh, also the EMSC model. So a little bit of adjustment going on here across the northern edge of the Pacific Plate boundary. Uh, extreme Southern California seeing some activity as well. Let's go ahead and check out Southern Cal, see what's going on down here. Uh, 2.5 and above, well, it's a little bit active here in the last 24 hours. The latest earthquake is going to be this three-pointer off the coast here of San Diego uh, on the San Diego trough. And uh, that area is capable of producing a large earthquake. Been a little while since we've seen any specific movement directly on that trough zone, but uh, I got a three-pointer out there this morning. Uh, also, just after midnight local time, another earthquake here in this uh, sequence of events there near the California spaceport area uh, across the uh, coast range here of Southern California with a 3.6. Now, in the last 24 hours or so, we've seen a number of earthquakes here in this area coming up on about four of them uh, with magnitudes up to 3.6. The smallest one's a two-pointer. Uh, hard to say if they're leaving out some smaller earthquake activity because it seems to be odd. Seems to be a little strange here to see uh, this type of magnitude with no smaller microquakes in there. Uh, a little odd, but uh, some uptick going on there across Southern California here today and yesterday. Uh, as far as the rest of the state here, uh, across the uh, Los Angeles area, got uh, a couple smaller earthquakes here outside of Anaheim near Orange, Orange, California, with some very small microquakes there. Uh, nothing major going on here across the San Andreas Fault for now. Garlock Fault Shear Zone and Ridgecrest area, fairly quiet today. They're uh, actually really odd. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity happening here at all. It just has come to a halt. Outside of Las Vegas, a handful of smaller quakes as well here near um, oh, the Rock Valley Fault Zone. It looks like mainly small microquakes. Going to have to excuse me. I still am not quite back to normal yet, but I'm getting there. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a handful of smaller quakes up through Montana down into Wyoming, right around uh, the Yellowstone area. Nothing big going on there, but I uh, let's go ahead and see. Let's verify because it's you never know if something's going on here and they're just not reporting it. I see one earthquake over here across the Maple Creek area in the last hour or so. That uh, looks like a very small, maybe a 1.5 or so. They may have even shown this. 1.3. Okay, I was off just a little bit. It's over here to the west near the Hebgen Lake Estates. Nothing big for now. Texas, uh, rest of the country out here. Not uh, anything of noteworthy value. New Madrid Seismic Zone, pretty quiet. Let's see what we got going on here across the world view. Kick this into motion. Uh, uh, Japan area, awfully quiet here today and yesterday. Not a whole lot going on here through this region. Uh, primary focus looks to be across the typical crunch zone here around the Java Trench, Indonesia Islands area with a bunch of threes and fours. Deeper activity here from yesterday, so that has added strain here across the plate boundary. See these two deep earthquakes? Uh, that normally puts the strain out here along the plate boundary where we're expecting that. Well, we, we have seen it filled, filled in here. Uh, with some fours, very shallow adjustment following that deeper activity in the last 24 hours. Uh, also some movement out here across this area of the plate boundary. We'll, we'll definitely watch it. There's nothing big going on out here for now, but, you know, it's a it's been a cycle here of quietness followed up by days of seismic uptick. Uh, over the last couple days here, a swarm of activity all the way down from, well, up from the Middle America Trench, Mexico area, all the way down here to the South America region, the Peru Chile Trench uh, had a, um, a decent amount of earthquake activity. Very visible here on the globe. 
And today, most of that movement confined to a couple different areas there. It looks like right around the Costa Rica area with a bunch of three stirring up here, specifically in this region. And also a spot down here in the Chile area with a, a lot of threes clustering in that region as well. Not shown up here on the USGS map, but it is roughly right about in this region here where we're seeing that elevated swarm of activity. Puerto Rico Trench here been quite active in the last 24 hours. Um, latest activity here shows a handful of quakes in three, uh, two and three range. Latest quake of 2.8 in this clustering going on here across the southwestern edge of Puerto Rico. Now, a lot of times when we get elevated seismic activity here across the Middle America Trench, also activity here across the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, it tends to put the squeeze here on this Caribbean plate. And that's why we've seen elevated seismic activity here in the last couple of days because we've seen this whole area light up. We had a, um, a uh, Mid-Atlantic Ridge here, earthquake, five-pointer from a couple days ago. So this is a divergent boundary area that will add further strain out here against the Caribbean plate and the Puerto Rico Trench. And that's why we're seeing that swarming there across a couple different areas of the Puerto Rico region, which uh, looks like they're still continuing today. The Atlantic Ocean for now, pretty quiet, aside from that one earthquake uh, from a couple days ago. Middle or Mediterranean regions here, uh, a lot of older quake activity from last night. Twos and a couple threes in there, even a 4.9 out around the Turkey area. I believe that was from yesterday. 4.9 here in the mix. Yeah, that was at 10.07 a.m. yesterday, so we're just past the 24-hour threshold. I need to adjust that just... Well, it's going to stay on there as long as I keep it clicked. Hold on a second. Let's get rid of that 4.9 because that's actually a little bit older than uh, the 24-hour period. So right there. Should be good. I try not to keep too many earthquakes on here. Just 24 hours of coverage. And that is it. Otherwise, we could end up with a huge mess and really can't see what's going on here on the globe when it's so cluttered. But uh, yeah, there we go. So Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Mediterranean twos and threes today. Getting a little bit of migration here across the northern edge of the Java Trench. 4.8, one of the latest quakes here off Sumatra area. That uh, looks like it's trying to lead up here across the Andaman Sea towards India. You can see it there on the map as well. A little migrational pattern leading up around this plate boundary. Um, Andaman Sea here has been actually pretty quiet last 30 days of activity here does show a handful of earthquakes here so not 100 percent certain if we'll see any further activity out here uh, in the near term but you know you got to watch these seismic gap zones where there's no activity you got activity across one area of the plate boundary it skips hundreds of miles or maybe even thousands of miles and starts swarming up north that would be an, a good indicator here to watch this region but uh Last 30 days of activity has been uh, somewhat active in this area of the Andaman Sea. Not so much up here across this area of the plate boundary. So maybe an earthquake or two with, within that region should fill in. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii here, pretty quiet. Goodness, not a whole lot going on there for now across the uh, volcanoes. Uh, let's see, 1.3 Alaska, that's the latest quake. All right, let's check out space weather, see what's going on out here. Did our, did our big time storm come in last night? G2 class storm? Well, I don't even think we hit the G1 class um, category last night. Peaked up around KP index of four and a half. Woohoo! Um, yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty much a dud. You know, and this, uh, this flare that popped here a couple days ago is going to be this one right here. Uh, we were expecting a G2 class storm from this CME that popped off during the X flare here a couple days ago, a full halo CME earth directed with a decent earth directed component. And it just pretty much fluked out. It's almost like buying one of those giant fireworks on 4th of July, lighting it up and it's just a couple spitters and spatters and then it fizzles out. Well, that I'm thinking that's what happened here last night. Because uh, not even into the G1 class territory. 
and that was uh, forecasted there last night. You took it off here, but yeah. Anyway, a little odd. We're still seeing some proton events out there across the uh, northern and southern polar region there. Uh, and that is due to all the X flare and multiple M flare activity shooting off charged protons here uh, in the last couple days. Those do tend to stick around for a little while. X flare threat still elevated at 30% chance here. I had a dream uh, last night about a super massive X40 X flare. And um, I can't remember exactly what happened in it, but I was trying to get on the computer uh, to let the, uh, the folks know out here, the YouTube family and uh it wouldn't let me connect to the internet the x flare had produced you know worldwide internet outage hopefully that's not the case uh, in the future hopefully i'm not seeing uh, some visions here of what's to come but uh yeah it was a pretty crazy dream i had super i, I don't even think an x40 would do that i think we've had a we've had a number of large flares up around that category throughout you know it's been a little while but uh, it has happened. Let's see here what we got. Off. So let's look at these flares and real, uh, real quick and see. I'm trying to keep my voice at a low tone so I don't crackle. Uh, just about got it kicked out of my system and then I'm, I'm good. Uh, regional sunspots here, a massive area currently facing the Earth. Um, regions of interest here in this region of this area probably going to be the sunspot area with close complexity of the magnetic structure there also maybe this region starting to show a little bit more growth here with some newer development around that center core and uh, really not too concerned about this one this one's got a little split and then we got this other area that's produced a couple M flares here in the last 24 hours uh, that's on the northeastern quadrant of the sun that's turning into a more Earth-directed component. But either way, you know, a number of these sunspots here could produce some X flares. Uh, that's why the elevated threat remains there at 30% chance for an X flare. Nothing major in the Aurora forecast. Last night was a dud. And um, hopefully we can get that to change there for the Aurora fans. Uh, let's see what we got here for Storm Prediction Center. Nothing major severe today, uh, but coming up here for day three on wednesday into thursday we got a huge area of severe weather potential and uh, that spells some tornado and large hail potential out here as we head into wednesday and thursday of this week across your typical zones that see this type of setup here in the spring and the fall months uh, the jet stream starts to dip down further here into northern uh, into the states here interacts with the warmer moist air so you get that cooler drier air and uh, the special spark there between the two interactions creates that severe weather. And uh, it's looking like a dandy here come Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Got to watch that. We'll cover that a little bit more as we get closer here to the uh, to that time period. Uh, California, nice and cool out here today. Only supposed to be 67 degrees. I will take it. Got some rain showers and chances of snow across the mountain regions here of the Pacific Northwest as we head uh, deeper into this week and then a little stronger storm behind that for Halloween it looks like this is going to be Halloween evening Pacific Northwest relatively uh, wet and cold a lot of snow up in the mountain regions rain for the valleys and of course along the coastline northern California northward really uh, I'm not expecting any rain showers here for about probably about Redding South where it's going to be clear for Halloween night maybe a sprinkle or two but I don't think it's going to be a, a soaker, uh, not until later uh, the following day there, Friday. Might get a little, a little bit wetter. but uh, And then after that, well, let's see where that hurricane is down in the Gulf of uh, Mexico or see if it's going to enter in there. I don't think it is. See, even this model. The latest model is showing that tropical system way down here now to the southeast. Uh, so it just goes to show you how quick these weather models can change. Not seeing anything showing up there for the uh, for the Gulf or Florida area for tropical development, and that's good news. But we'll continue to watch that West Coast storm doors open. Uh, these are not going to be super soakers out here. Uh, it's got a it's got a uh, 
kind of a north northwestern direction from the storm so it's moving off here from the northwest and those storms right there are relatively cold they got wet they bring a lot of snow to the mountains here so uh, that's what we're going to see here it looks like as we head deeper into november southern california getting in on some of the mix as well so that's good news and um you know because normally during a la nina pattern these guys down here in southern california are super dry uh, but i guess you know it's, it's good news that we're getting some rain down there they need the water as well california needs water definitely don't want to enter into the drought again uh, speaking of the drought I'll pull up the current weather model here and show you guys current drought conditions out here <clears throat> Um, of the states, that's a lot. There's a lot of uh, extreme drought out there across Oklahoma, eastern Texas. Those areas are awfully dry, even up around the Great Lakes states. Goodness. Um, this is the current drought intensity at the surface levels. As you go deeper here, you know, certain areas may still have some moisture down below, but. Uh, Yeah, that's hopefully those guys get some rain. As you can see out here in California, we've had a, a number of wet winters, which um, is pretty significant. Even down Southern California uh, has been out of the drought for the most part, but we're starting to creep back in a little bit with some drier conditions out here. So hopefully these next couple storms here will erase some of this activity here on the drought map. But yeah, that's a scary picture out here across the east up into Canada as well. Pretty crazy. And if we look at the uh, rainfall out here, uh, let's go back to um, where's our rainfall? Wind accumulation, rain accumulation. There we go. If we put this into motion with the ECMWF model, some of those areas that are drought stricken are going to, you know, they have, they have to deal with the severe weather that's coming up Wednesday and Thursday, but it's going to put down a little bit of rain out there for the folks as well. Uh, so, you know, hopefully the severe weather stays away, but unfortunately that's a, a contributing factor there to producing a lot of the heavy rainfall. But uh, they're going to get some rainfall west coast as well. This is the model run up until about the 6th of November. Not a big amount here across the area of Northern California, but we'll take anything we can get. Most of the substantial rainfall up into the Pacific Northwest. And that's the ECMWF model, the GFS, GFS model, a little lighter across Northern California there. But uh, for the folks out there across the Southern Plains, Midwest area, you guys have a bunch of rain coming your way. A lot of it falling Wednesday and Thursday of this week. All right, real quick glance here at the seismograph stations. Pretty quiet. A real quick glance here at the USGS map. Uh, no newer earthquakes out here yet. Uh, we'll just continue to watch it through the day and see how it plays out here. Hope everyone enjoys their Monday. We'll catch you guys back out here just a little bit later. Take care.